When the Dodgers signed Fernando Valenzuela in 1979, they were very excited. They had a, a prospect on their hands. But after the first year in the California League, Mike Brito thought, you know what? Maybe he needs another pitch. And he talked to Al Campanis, and they both agreed that Fernando just didn't throw hard enough to get away with just two pitches. I said, well, maybe a split finger or maybe a screwball. And Campania looked at me and said, well, we don't have nobody to throw the split finger here now. I said, yeah, but we got somebody to throw a screwball. The only player in the Dodger organization who threw a screwball was Bobby Castillo. I'll never forget the first time I saw Baba walking out of the bullpen. They announced him, you know, Roberto Castillo. I'm thinking, all right, you know, another Puerto Rican or another, you know, Cuban or Panamanian. He comes walking out of the bullpen, and I'm looking at him, and I'm going, no. Nah, man. There's only one place where Roberto learns how to walk like that. It's East L.A. I grew up five minutes from Dodger Stadium. I've been a Dodger fan ever since. I mean, way back. I mean, ever since I was a little kid. I always had a baseball in my hand. I was always throwing rocks. I was always throwing something. Bobby Castillo, he was a uh, relief pitcher, spot starter, uh, but he'd actually locally uh, gone to Lincoln High School. Lincoln High School is just about a uh, five-minute drive from Dodger Stadium. Well, it was, it was weird because they had told me to go down to Arizona and teach this, this kid from Mexico the screwball. And then I didn't speak Spanish that well. He didn't speak no English. But through baseball, you know, I guess it was just, you know, we knew what we were talking about. A screwball is probably a backward slider. From here, you have to release the ball. You, you come in this way. And basically, it's just cutting the ball to where it tails into a right-hand hitter, away from a left-hand hitter. And then we... Fernando got the screwball and threw him in two velocity. The ball would touch him, you know. And that was the big difference. So about two weeks into the spring season, Jerry Rice, who was the ace of the Dodgers that year, comes up lame, he can't throw. And so by chance, the guy that was gonna fall under rotation was Fernando. So Lasorda put him in. I tell him, how do you feel, Fernando? You're gonna be the starting pitcher? That's a piece of cake, he told me in Spanish. It's un pedazo de pastel. On that opening day, he went out there. And I tell you, man, it was like one of our own is taking the hill on opening day. That was special. Fernando Mania was the unbelievable, most unbelievable. I don't think even Beirut brings so many people to the stadium and the fans show so much interest in a player like they did with Fernando. Este es un Fernando made a revolution. Fernando brought a lot of hope to a lot of people. For the Latin communities, I mean, it was, it was a blessing. You know, we had somebody to actually cheer for for the Dodgers now. Even though he was a Mexican from Mexico, and I'm from here, as were my parents, he's a Mexican, so he was my guy. The Mexicans were going nuts because he was their guy. So you had Mexicans and Mexican-Americans sitting together, talking together for the first time in Spanish and English about one thing, Fernando. And they just went crazy because they had somebody, finally, that they could look up to, somebody who could represent them to the highest degree of class, dignity, and character. And Fernando just made it fun, because every place he pitched, no matter where, what city was at, he sold out the stadium. He couldn't do anything without people mobbing him. And he was, you know, 19, 20, 21 year old kid. It was like, like Elvis was around. But that year, Fernando had the eight straight shutouts. He was a Nino, he was in Toro. They were writing songs about him. Who knew the odds that from the Arizona Instructional League, after the 1979 season, that two years later, both Bobby and Fernando would be teammates on the 1981 world champion Dodgers. You know, that season was meant for us to do it. You know, it was meant for Fernando to be there. It was just meant for the Dodgers to be world champions that year. Everybody makes a big deal about Fernando and Mexico and everything like that. And, you know, Bobby was a role model just as well for all the local kids from that area. Throughout Fernando's career, he always gave credit to Bobby Castillo for teaching him that pitch. 
And I know Bobby was very proud of the success that Fernando had with it.